This episode is brought to you by IVP. How do we enter into our feelings and listen to what they're telling us instead of ignoring or bypassing them? Professor and personal development coach Dr. P. Samadhi helps us navigate the complexity of our emotions in her book, Why Do I Feel Like This? With insights from both psychology and scripture, this book offers you a clear plan to get your peace and freedom back and find your joy again. As a listener of this podcast, you can receive Why Do I Feel Like This for 25% off when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Inner Varsity Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes, that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, beginning at verse 11, through 2 Chronicles chapter 8. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, beginning at verse 11. The Lord gives Solomon a promise and a warning. After Solomon finished building the Lord's temple and the royal palace and accomplished all his plans for the Lord's temple and his royal palace, the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have answered your prayer and chosen this place to be my temple where sacrifices are to be made. When I close up the sky so that it doesn't rain or command locusts to devour the land's vegetation or send a plague among my people, if my people who belong to me humble themselves pray, seek to please me, and repudiate their sinful practices, then I will respond from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now I will be attentive and responsive to the prayers offered in this place. Now I have chosen and consecrated this temple by making it my permanent home. I will be constantly present there. You must serve me as your father David did. Do everything I command and obey my rules and regulations. Then I will establish your dynasty. Just as I promised to your father David, you will not fail to have a successor ruling over Israel. But if you people ever turn away from me, fail to obey the regulations and rules I instruct you to keep, and decide to serve and worship other gods, then I will remove you from my land I have given you. I will abandon this temple I have consecrated with my presence, and I will make you an object of mockery and ridicule among all the nations. As for this temple, which was once majestic, everyone who passes by it will be shocked and say, Why did the Lord do this to this land and this temple? Others will then answer, Because they abandoned the Lord God of their ancestors, who led them out of Egypt. They embraced other gods whom they worshipped and served. That is why he brought all this disaster down on them. 2 Chronicles chapter 8 Building Projects and Commercial Efforts After twenty years, during which Solomon built the Lord's temple and his royal palace, Solomon rebuilt the cities that Haram had given him and settled Israelites there. Solomon went to Hamath Zobah and seized it. He built up Tadmor in the wilderness and all the stored cities he had built in Hamath. He made Upper Beth Horon and Lower Beth Horon fortified cities with walls and barred gates and built up Balath, all the stored cities that belonged to him, and all the cities where chariots and horses were kept. He built whatever he wanted in Jerusalem, Lebanon, and throughout his entire kingdom. Now several non-Israelite peoples were left in the land after the conquest of Joshua, including the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Their descendants remain in the land. The Israelites were unable to wipe them out. Solomon conscripted them for his work crews, and they continued in that role 
to this very day. Solomon did not assign Israelites to these work crews. The Israelites served as his soldiers, officers, charioteers, and commanders of his chariot forces. These men worked for Solomon as supervisors. There were a total of 250 of them who were in charge of the people. Solomon moved Pharaoh's daughter up from the city of David to the palace he had built for her, for he said, My wife must not live in the palace of King David of Israel, for the places where the ark of the Lord has entered are holy. Then Solomon offered burnt sacrifices to the Lord on the altar of the Lord, which he had built in front of the temple's porch. He observed the daily requirements for sacrifices that Moses had specified for Sabbaths, new moon festivals, and the three annual celebrations, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Shelters. As his father David had decreed, Solomon appointed the divisions of the priests to do their assigned tasks, the Levitical orders to lead worship and help the priests with their daily tasks, and the divisions of the gatekeepers to serve at their assigned gates. This was what David the man of God had ordered. They did not neglect any detail of the king's orders pertaining to the priests, Levites, and treasuries. All the work ordered by Solomon was completed from the day the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid until it was finished. The Lord's temple was completed. Then Solomon went to Ezion Geber and to Elat on the coast in the land of Edom. Haram sent him ships and some of his sailors, men who were well acquainted with the sea. They sailed with Solomon's men to Ophir and took from there 450 talents of gold, which they brought back to King Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 9 verses 10 through 28. Foreign Affairs and Building Projects After twenty years during which Solomon built the Lord's temple and the royal palace, King Solomon gave King Hiram of Tyre twenty towns in the region of Galilee, because Hiram had supplied Solomon with cedars, evergreens, and all the gold he wanted. When Hiram went out from Tyre to inspect the towns Solomon had given him, he was not pleased with them. Hiram asked, Why did you give me these towns, my friend? He called that area the region of Kabul, a name which it has retained to this day. Hiram had sent to the king 120 talents of gold. Here are the details concerning the work crews King Solomon conscripted to build the Lord's temple, his palace, the terrace, the wall of Jerusalem, the cities of Hazor, Megiddo, and Gezer. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had attacked and captured Gezer. He burned it and killed the Canaanites who lived in the city. He gave it as a wedding present to his daughter who married Solomon. Solomon built up Gezer, Lower Beth Horon, Balath, Tadmor, in the wilderness, all the stored cities that belonged to him, and the cities where chariots and horses were kept. He built whatever he wanted in Jerusalem, Lebanon, and throughout his entire kingdom. Now several non-Israelite peoples were left in the land after the conquest of Joshua, including the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Their descendants remained in the land. The Israelites were unable to wipe them out completely. Solomon conscripted them for his work crews, and they continue in that role to this very day. Solomon did not assign Israelites to these work crews. The Israelites served as his soldiers, tenants, officers, charioteers, and commanders of his chariot forces. These men were also in charge of Solomon's work projects. There were a total of 550 men who supervised the workers. Solomon built the terrace as soon as Pharaoh's daughter moved up from the city of David to the palace Solomon built for her. Three times a year, Solomon offered burnt offerings and peace offerings on the altar he had built for the Lord, burning incense along with them before the Lord. He made the temple his official worship place. King Solomon also built ships in Ezion Geber, which is located near Elat, in the land of Edom, on the shore of the Red Sea. Hiram sent his fleet and some of his sailors who were well acquainted with the sea to serve with Solomon's men. They sailed to Ophir, took from there 420 talents of gold, and then brought them to King Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 4 verses 1 through 19 Solomon's royal court and administrators King Solomon ruled over all Israel these were his officials Azariah son of Zadok was the priest Elihoreth and Ahijah the sons of Shisha wrote down what happened Jehoshaphat son of Ahilud was in charge of the records Benaiah son of Jehoiada was commander of the army Zadok and Abiathar were priests. Azariah, son of Nathan, was supervisor of the district governors. Zabud, son of Nathan, was a priest and advisor to the king. Abishar was supervisor of the palace. Adoniram, son of Abda, was supervisor of the work crews. Solomon had twelve district governors appointed throughout Israel who acquired supplies for the king and his palace. Each was responsible for one month in the year. These were their names. Ben Hur was in charge of the hill country of Ephraim. Ben Deker was in charge of Makaz, Shalbim, Beth Shemesh, and Elon. 
Bethana Ben Hesed was in charge of Aruboth. He controlled Soko and all the territory of Hefer. Ben Abinadab was in charge of Nafath Dor. He was married to Solomon's daughter, Tapath. Bana, son of Ahilud, was in charge of Tanakh and Megiddo, as well as all of Beth Sheen, next to Zarathon, below Jezreel, and Beth Sheen, to Abel, Mahola, and on past Jokmim. Ben Geber was in charge of Ramoth Gilead. He controlled the villages of Jair, son of Manasseh, in Gilead, as well as the region of Argob in Bashan, including sixty large walled cities with bronze bars locking their gates. Ahinadab, son of Edo, was in charge of Mahanaim. Ahimaz was in charge of Natali. He married Solomon's daughter, Basemath. Bana, son of Hushai, was in charge of Asher and Olo. Jehoshaphat, son of Parua, was in charge of Ishakar. Shemai, son of Ela, was in charge of Benjamin. Geber, son of Uri, was in charge of the land of Gilead. The territory, which had once belonged to King Sihon of the Amorites and to King Og of Bashan, he was sole governor of the area. Psalm 110, a psalm of David. Here is the Lord's proclamation to my Lord. Sit down in my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord extends your dominion from Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people willingly follow you when you go into battle. On the holy hills at sunrise, the dew of your youth belongs to you. The Lord makes his promise on oath and will not revoke it. You are an eternal priest after the pattern of Melchizedek. O Lord, at your right hand, he strikes down kings in the day. He unleashes his anger. He executes judgment against the nations. He fills the valleys with corpses. He shatters their heads over the vast battlefield. From the stream along the road, he drinks. Then he lifts up his head. New Testament reading. Mark chapter 12, verses 35 through 37. The Messiah, David's son and Lord. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he said, How is it that the experts in the law say that the Christ is David's son? David himself, by the Holy Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David himself calls him Lord, how can he be his son? And the large crowd was listening to him with delight. Matthew chapter 22, verses 41 through 46. The Messiah, David's son and Lord. While the Pharisees were assembled, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said, the son of David. He said to them, How then does David by the Spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David then calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to answer him a word. And from that day on, no one dared to question him any longer. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. King of glory, thank you for your word. God, I thank you that you, none of, not one of your promises falls to the ground. I thank you, God, that you keep your covenant. Thank you, O Lord, that your promise to David, uh, his descendants, O Lord God, would always reign, O God, has been made a manifest and is true even till this day, and true because it is in Jesus, O oh Lord God, that we see the majesty of King Jesus reigning supreme even now. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for sending Jesus, your only begotten Son, to live and die, O oh Lord, so that we might have eternal life. Thank you that King Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells us, O Lord. Would you help us to live lives, O Lord God, in humble obedience to Jesus' lordship and kingship in our lives, O Lord. Thank you. Thank you that we are co-heirs with Christ. Thank you, O God, that we have been brought into the kingdom of light. We are grateful. We are thankful and we cannot wait for the day when King Jesus comes back and we see the full manifestation of the kingdom of God made clear, O oh Lord God. And we see the new heavens and the new earth, O oh God, and we all reign and live and dwell with one another. God, we, we can't wait. We pray that you would hasten the day and draw many, 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 many people unto you, O oh Lord, as we wait. And help us, O oh God, to make use of the time that we have, O oh God, not to bury our talents, 
O Lord God, but to be found talents that we have multiplied for your kingdom and for your glory and for our good. I pray this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag get in the word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee.